I mean, so uh, concussions in football is something that, and really in all sports in general, is something that in the past year or so has uh, really gained a lot of steam. And uh, this is evidenced kind of by a lot of magazine articles, covers, um, studies, and books that have been uh, done on this topic. And so um, I playing football, and uh, it's always been my favorite sport. It's been something that I've really taken notice of. And so I started kind of investigate why I think concussions have been such a big deal. Um, for one, it's the violent nature of football. Um, it's one of the most dangerous sports played in the world just because of how physical it is. Um, ESPN Sports Science analyzed the statistics of head-to-head -head hits, and uh, they concluded that every year there are 100,000 concussions in football across all the levels. Um, and although the hits just last 15 milliseconds, um, the two heads will combine at a combined speed of 20 miles per hour and deliver 100 to 190 Gs of force, uh, which is the equivalent of being hit in the head with a sledgehammer. Um, and to kind of put that more into perspective, this is an NFL player against, uh, with the head of sports science, um, who I think they said he's about 5'10", 180, so a pretty average-sized guy. And uh, this is them um, going just head-to-head -head in, in a quick drill. So in uh, the rest of the video, they say that his head was a total of nine feet off the ground at its highest point. So I mean, clearly these are huge people that it's kind of almost difficult to understand how big they are. But so what preventive measures have been taken? So first, the NFL has done a lot of rule changes. Um, you know, there's now penalties and fines that come with hits on defenseless receivers and head-to-head -head contact. However, they're still occurring. This hasn't really stopped anything. Um, helmets, the helmet technology has advanced greatly. There's improved padding, improved shell design that's made to disperse energy. And also now they have sensors in them, so a coach can have a detector on the sideline and will say, like, how uh, powerful a hit on the head was and whether or not you should take them out. And finally, awareness. Um, and especially youth leagues are stressing kind of not only the long-term effects, but also um, how to hit properly and to avoid head-to-head -head hits. And uh, the NFL Players Association filed a lawsuit this past year against the NFL, um, and the judge rejected the $765 million settlement that the NFL originally proposed because they said it wasn't enough money to cover all of the issues that it has caused. Uh, however, in my mind, the real, pro the real problem is ignorance and really what's the unknown. So first of all, it's very difficult to diagnose a concussion. It's not like a broken bone where you can take an x-ray and just have a definitive answer whether you have a concussion or not. I mean, it's a function of how the brain works. Um, so it's really, it's, it's tough for doctors to see. Second, young kids, and for that matter, really, people at any age have a hard time making split-second decisions based off long-term, like 10, 15-year results. Um, you know, like an NFL player in the moment isn't going to really have time to stop and think, like, how is this going to affect my memory 15 years down the road? So, And finally, um, players want to return as quickly as possible. They don't want to appear hurt. Uh, they have to earn their paycheck, or they just love the game too much. Um, so one of the staggering statistics I found is that 16% uh, of players who lose consciousness will return on the same day and continue playing, um, which I guess, I mean, you can assume any doctor will advise you against. So here I have a section on just kind of quotes from NFL players versus quotes from Choate students who have dealt with concussions and sports injuries, um, just to kind of uh, show the kind of contrast and attitude between the two. So um, on the first topic of kind of weakness, pain, and strength, um, Eric Dickerson who's a, and Anthony Hargrove, who are uh, both NFL players, Eric Dickerson's in the Hall of Fame, uh, said roughly, you got to be tough, you're taught not to show pain. If you come out of the game, you look weak. Um, and that's in comparison to my roommate Peter Dyson, who had to quit lacrosse because of concussions, saying, that's ridiculous, everybody gets hurt, nobody is going to think that you're soft. If you're hurt, you should come out so that somebody on your team who's fully healthy can play and be better. Um, so, you know, there, there's just a clear two different viewpoints on the, on the topic of how, of how you look if you take yourself out. Uh, secondly, um, kind of the injury factor of it. Uh, Mike Sellers, NFL fullback, said if you get a concussion, they've got to take you out of the game. So if you can hide it and conceal it as much as possible, you pay for it the next day, but you'll be able to stay in the game, um, which is obviously kind of a dangerous way to look at it. And so Charlie Borick, who struggled with concussions in hockey, uh, contrasted that by saying, I just had to think long term. I could have played, but the doctors 
uh, drives made it against it, and the risk was way too high of getting another injury. And finally, um, the way, you know, other paths other than your sport, uh, all pro NFL player Maurice Jones-Drew said, quote, hide it, the bottom line is you have to be able to put food on the table, no one's going to sign or want a guy who can't stay healthy. Um, and to oppose this, Alana Heaton said, basically a bunch of talk doctors told me to stop because I've had so many. I had hope of playing in college, but there was not much after. And Peter Dyson said, you have to understand that there are myriad paths you can be successful in, not just sports. It's only one fewer option. Um, so I believe really the solution does not lie in fixing the way football is played or changing the rules or making it a less of a violent sport, but really the attitude of the players I think there's just so much passion from the players in the sport and such a manly stigma that comes with it that the, they have a, there's going to be a tough time adjusting. Um, you know, it's just the awareness of the long-term effects, awareness that there are other, there are other options for players um, rather than just, you know, you don't have to just make a living playing football. And while it may be their best option, and there, there are, in fact, others. And uh, just kind of change of the culture surrounding football if they want to make any real difference not just by, you know, throwing a yellow flag every time someone gets hit in the head. So, thank, thank you. you.